So I got I got two Texas numbers calling in. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to line one first and let's see. Is this Dahlia? Hi, it's me. It's you. Can you hear me? Can I you can hear, hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I'm excited to talk to you, Dahlia. Hey, 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 hey. It's I, me I, I from gotta Texas. tell you. <laughs> I well first off, now I want to come to Texas because I want to come to your place. And and, and awesome. second off, I, I gotta tell you, like I was on it like I, I love bar rescue. I, I, I'm a huge fan of Taffer and the whole bar rescue show and all. But I I was honest, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people do when they watch the show, they go and they check and see to make sure is the place still even still open, you know, and it was the next day and I was telling my daughter about the show as we were out at lunch. And I'm like, you know what? I, I, I got to look it up. And I, I looked it up and I saw, and I'm like, okay, awesome. And I left a comment and you got back to me and I truly was so moved watching that episode because I, I honestly felt very bad for you. Like when he came in and was chewing you up and down, I was like, Oh my God, it, it, it was very demeaning. And I felt really bad. Okay. And, <laughs> it didn't, but like the mood honestly, just like, I just, it didn't bother me. I took it. I took it like a champ. It, it was, you know, it is what it is. And, John Taffer is a tough guy, and um, he does know the bar business, and I did need the help, and you have to take the shit and the sugar, I guess. <laughs> we, we, you took it. You, you took it like a champ. Yeah. It, I mean, you know, he was, you know, we had our private conversation afterwards, you know, after the stress test, and um, I was pleased with he had to say to me and that was important and um that gave me some you know some reassurance that i pretty much knew what i was doing i just kind of lost sight of my business for a little while do, do you think that uh, yeah, yeah actually i was like as uh, my co-host nick who's usually very quiet during the interviews when i was telling him about the episode early on in the, in the talk up about it and I was saying to him, I said, you know, it's probably gotten into a situation where, you know, you got so far into debt and, you know, whatever else happening in your life, you were kind of just like in a total, you know, just fuck it mode and just, you know, didn't care to a point. Well, you know, I've always cared about my businesses. I've owned seven bars in 15 years. I've made money. I've lost money. I've lost money. I've lost money. I made a little money. I've flipped bars. I've sold bars. I've lost bars. And I actually own two clubs right now, uh, which is Country Nights, Madame Dahlia's, and I also own a place called Whiskey Girls, and I've owned them at time. However, the other one is impeccably beautiful. It does, of course, I always need a rescue. Today, I can take a rescue. Any takers? Come on. <laughs> um, but, but honestly, um, you know, um, I was in a survival mode, and um, when Bar Rescue came to town, Somebody referred me. They said, hey, we don't need the help, but we know somebody that does need the help. And, of course, I was a perfect candidate for the situation. And um, I appreciate all their help, and I appreciate their, you know, their um, professionalism and their um, knowledge. And I took it, and I took what I could from it. And I still am not where I need to be, and I didn't – follow every step they, you know, ask me to. Right. However, I, I didn't, um, what I want to say is it's not because I don't want to, it's kind of like baby steps. I'm, I'm still trying to reach that goal. I'm still trying to get there. I'm just not there yet, but you know, sure. ultimately I'd love to follow his steps because he has, he has the right, um, information, the right knowledge to get people where they need to be. Crazy thing about uh, about John Taffer, um, and I didn't know, find this out until maybe five six years ago. The very first bar he opened up is literally right around the corner from where I live now. And I, I remember going there as a teenager. It was like uh, this huge freaking uh, in the eighties like nightclub 
like state of the art space age nightclub. It was called Pulsations. It was the very first club he uh-huh. opened up. And um, now it, the sad part is now it's a a retirement home. <laughs> it was knocked down and oh. replaced with a retirement home. Almost where but, John um, needs to be. Almost where yeah. John needs Pepper needs to be one day real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, 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 so you didn't actually like seek them out. They ended up finding you. Well, actually, it's um to be honest, they had they had a casting call. Basically, um, they were looking for people in the area, and um, they didn't look me up. They looked up another bar, and they said, "Oh no, we don't need the help. We're." We're financially stable. We're rich. We don't need you. But we know some sorry bitch that needs your help. No, they just say it like that. (laughs) Honestly, they just said, we know this girl by the name of Dahlia, and we think she just might need the help. Um, That's when I got a call from the casting directors. And um, it wasn't just an overnight thing. It's a big process to even get on Bar Rescue. And um, I, I honestly, I'm honored, even though, yes, it was trashy, not classy. And I would like to think I carry myself mm, a little better than what you saw. However, do I have crazy in me? Of course. Otherwise, you wouldn't I, I don't it. believe that for a second. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh. So it was fun. It was fun. I have no regrets other than, you know. I don't know. There's a few things. I mean, the next day after the cameras are gone and everybody's gone and everybody moves on with their life and you wake up and then you wake up with kind of like a moral hangover. Right. You know, have you ever had a moral hangover? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You wake, you wake up and you go, Oh my God, what did I do? Oh my God. What did I say? Oh, is was this worth it? Uh, you know, where do I go from here? And um, that's what I felt. I actually cried for like three days after I um, did the show. And then I moved on. And it actually filmed in June, and it just, it just now aired Sunday. So, you know, I, I had time to toughen up and get over it. And I, honestly, I did not even see the show until Sunday like everybody else. That was it. I did not have any warning. I didn't have any. Anything, everything was a surprise to me as it was for everybody else. Yeah, which I was going to say, like, uh, was it? I, I, you did a viewing party at the bar, so was it tough to to watch that in front of everybody? What happened? You know, honestly, the first few minutes it was funny, and then there were a few times that there was tears rolling down my eyes, and yeah. uh, quite a few times people just kept coming up to me and hugging me and hugging me and I was like I wanted to say oh get over it it's just a show but they were very sincere and compassionate and so of course I I went right with it oh yes please hug me I need it <laughs> you know <laughs> I, I, you know <laughs> you know who doesn't want a hug here and there who doesn't like a little bit of attention here and there so yeah, that was good it was all good I mean again I don't have regrets. Um, I did what I did, and I'm hoping it will help boost my business. I mean, who doesn't right. want to improve their life? All, it was all sure. for the love of, of of my business. You know, I'm passionate about what I do, and I have no shame, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done the show. But um, at the end of the day, it was all hoping to support my family. And um, better my life. Now, how about that? Because uh, your your daughter Crystal, um, do you you can tell the re- relationship was strained at that time. Do you think the relationship has gotten a lot better? Well, you know, I I only have one grandbaby, and I watch him three times a week. I'm always been a super great grandmother, uh, not great grandmother, a grandmother. I'm saying a fabulous grandmother, and um. I love my clothes. Now, does she support everything I do? Absolutely not. Um, My daughter is well-educated. She has a business degree in business and marketing, and she worked for one company, which I'd rather not say, for Mm -hmm. almost 18 years. She's only 32. 
she owned her own house at age 21. She's a homeowner. Yeah. And a nice. Single mom. Uh huh. And so she's always been motivated. Um, she, you know, she educated herself and she went to work at age 15. She used to walk to work at 15 years old without even my permission. She went and got herself a job. So my daughter and I have always been very close. Um, but does she support everything I do? Absolutely not. Has she helped bartend manage? Yes. But she, um, since the show, my daughter is, you know, working for um, a different corporation. She just gained a job a few weeks ago. And she's happy, and I'm happy for her. And nice. we were just a little scared. We didn't want it to affect her new job. Sure. <laughs> Sorry, I'm suffering from a few allergies. Oh here. boy. So well, well, that's. But you good. can ask like, anything. Any you can ask me anything I want. You want? I'm not scared. <laughs> believe, believe me, I didn't think you were scared at all. <laughs> Now, how about after it aired? I mean, has uh, has things been kind of crazy this week now that everything was, you know, brought back up and people reach like people like myself reaching out to you, et cetera, coming by the bar? Honestly, um, the evening, I didn't expect anything. I had no expectations, you know, good or bad. And um, there was some people that came from a neighborhood bar down the street and said, hey, we watched it from the friendly you know how you have neighboring friendly bars. This one is not sure. so friendly with me. And uh, they said, you know, we came down and we watched the show, and gosh, we just want to support you. And from here after, we're going to come visit you and support you, which these people had all these neighborhood bars, which are com- my competitors, were having a watch party. And that, uh, it kind of backfired on them because some of those people came in and said, we're here to support you. We love you now after watching that. It's so nice. That means so much to me. Genuinely, genuinely, I was, you know, very moved by it. And there was just people flocking in that evening. And then the next day, obviously, um, you know, there was other people coming in like, oh, well, you know, we want to see it. And we implemented the drinks. We kind of let the drinks go away. But once it aired, we brought them back because I did not want to, you know, to uh, be a failure in that. So we brought them back. Right. And people actually were ordering those drinks and they said, we came to meet you. And I was there. That was Monday. And then Tuesday I was exhausted. I couldn't move. And then yesterday people came looking for me. I wasn't there. And then today I happened to be at my other location and a guy showed up for lunch at T Willie's, which is I lease to the barbecue place. They share my location. They're, they're, you know, they're in my bar. And then, at right. night, it becomes my bar again. Even though we open at noon, it's 65 opportunity to lease, you know, to share my space with me, and it's been a great success for them. And it has sure. helped my business because, you know, beer and barbecue go together. Absolutely. So, yeah, um, yeah so to, to answer your question, it has helped. And so this gentleman, I wasn't sitting at Country Nights, Madame Dahlia's. I was sitting at my other bar, Whiskey Girls, and he came in and said, oh, my beat. And um, I'm, I gained a new customer. Yeah, because I mean, now you're you're going to be like one of them tourist spots. Like when people are going to come, uh, you know, looking for you, they're going to want to come meet you. Well, I hope so, and I hope I don't look as fat as I did on TV, and my face <laughs> and my makeup. Oh my God, I was horrified. Oh, stop! And come on now. It's okay if you. Make- and it's okay if you mention my lazy eye. I have a, uh, I have an eye condition I was born with. You know, it's a little bit uh, inebriated. It just kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of goes a little wacky on me. And so it was terrible on TV. So, yeah, that was a little painful watching my eye, you know, wander on TV. But uh, if anybody's wondering what happened, it's, I was born with it, so... It's wondering because something that I was born with. It's, it's, so yeah. I need eye surgery one day. But it didn't stop me from having babies. It didn't stop me from having sex. It hasn't stopped me from having boyfriends. It didn't stop me from having jobs. It didn't stop me from being an entrepreneur. It didn't stop me right. from being a loving person. It's just one of those things you have. It's kind of like yeah. somebody without a leg or somebody in a wheelchair or somebody with a disability. It doesn't, you know, stop you from living your life no not at all now how about uh 
the, the situation with uh, the one bartender who uh, ended up being fired, Melissa. Melissa? Well, Melissa and yeah. I are still in touch. We're still in touch. Uh, she still does not work for me at all. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Melissa's still very complicated. Um, Melissa's going to school, cosmetology school. I love Melissa, and I will always have a place in my heart for Melissa. But, um, you know, that was not stage. She, she did, you know, we did have to part ways, and it was right. just, it just had to be. It just had to be. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Maybe one. Maybe one day I'll bring her back. Maybe not there. Maybe in my next business venture. But for that place, the situation, the time, it just, the party was over. You know, we just had to grow up and move on. Yeah, I mean, from from the opening sequence where she was saying the stuff about you, and then the part that really rubbed me the wrong way was uh, the night of the stress test. Afterwards, how... You know, she's she she needed her money. Like screw anybody else. Like she needed to get her money. She wanted X amount of dollars, and then you clean and everything. And she just rolls out. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah, and honestly, um, just for the record, Bar Rescue doesn't tell you how to act. They don't tell you what to do. They don't stage all that. They might have cameras rolling, but they don't tell you how to misbehave. Stuff so that's you. You know, that's your personality. Right. And and Melissa. Again, she didn't care at the moment. She didn't care because she said she, you know, she had a babysitter all day and that she had to pay a sitter and that she worked hard and she was going to take money. And I, you know, at that moment, I mean, I couldn't argue with her because it was, it's it's just not worth it. It was just enough stress going on. And I said, fine, take it. And my daughter went with no pay and my daughter was okay with that because it was just easier. Sometimes it's just, easier just to give in than to fight with Melissa. And um, again, I, it, Melissa was very complicated and Melissa gets her way in the, in many, I mean, I have lost so many employees over Melissa and honestly to a point that, you know, people would give me ultimatums, either she goes or I go. And I, w- I didn't like people giving me ultimatums. So I would say, okay, well, then you go. But after a while, it's just it was exhausting, and I was drained. And I love Melissa, but I needed a break from Melissa. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you most definitely did the the right thing. You you really did. And I hate to see anybody lose a job, but I mean, you, you did the right thing. She's fine. Melissa will survive. She is a go getter, and Melissa will be fine. Shoot, I hope she gets something from this. You know, I don't want anybody to fail. I don't want anybody beaten up over the show. I want everybody to succeed. Yeah, I, I mean, like with a situation like that, it, you know, I, I had a similar situation a couple of years ago where I did like a, um, a TV talk show. And it, it, it from what it was supposed to be to what it turned into it was like totally different. So like. And I, we were trying to get lawyers to stop it from airing and stuff like that. And um, when it finally did air, they actually cleaned it up. And I was completely shocked. But this, this, you know, we were like expecting the worst. And like your situation was pretty bad. So like, was she kind of like uh, upset that they ended up airing some of that stuff? Or were you upset they aired anything? Well, of course, like when Melissa started throwing beer bottles and throwing alcohol, honestly, um, they they came in to see if we were the same people or if we went cold on them. And they came in a few months before that, and they filmed us just to see if we are the same big personalities. And Melissa lost her mind. And, and nobody told Melissa how to act or how not to act. And she truly, you know, turned a little wacky on me and um um that's that was that was bad and I wish that wouldn't have been aired but you know the damage was done and when you film and you sign a release you know tag your it that's that's it you put yourself out there and um you know that's what happened so nothing was staged yeah I, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, yeah. Nobody can miss that well faking. <laughs> so, now how about. Uh, 
I, I, I'm sure a lot of people want to know, uh, has your top been staying on? My boobs still stand up like the American flag. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't stand. that flag. I mean, yes, they stand, they stand tall and proud like the American flag. They've never sagged. I sleep with the bra every night, just so American, everybody in America can know. I've never slept without a bra, so I'm pretty proud of my perky boobs. And so for him to say my boobs size, that was like, ooh, you know, um, if I didn't need the rescue, I would have said some things about his man boobs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be the next show, John Taffer's moves. You know, so, I mean, at, at 55 years old, of course, uh, there's a few things that are going to, you know, gravity sets in. However, come on now. We work with what we have and just use the right bra, the right support system. I mean, there's there's men who wear, use the, what is those things right now? Um, Spanx. Spanx. There's men who wear Spanx on their stomachs, on their their bottoms, everything. In the, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any Spanx on. I didn't have anything. What you see is what you get, you know. Right. I didn't even have a good expensive bra on, but I do sleep with a bra every night, and um, my boobs do not sag. They do stand up like the American flag, tall and proud. There you go. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Salute the flag. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> now, how about uh, – is there any uh, drinking going on in, in the bar by you? Is there any what? Drinking. Um, you know, this is the deal. There's a law in Texas. You're not allowed to be intoxicated, but you're allowed to have a drink or drinks. You just cannot be intoxicated. That's a Texas law. And so, um, like, I it's on an individual basis. Like, my bartender's. They can have a you know drink here and there if they know how to carry themselves. Do I support sure. alcoholism? No. Do I support intoxication? No. Do I want a drunk customer? No. Do I want drunk bartenders? Absolutely not. Now, um, but if somebody buys you a drink here and there, you know I don't mind it, but it's all set on an individual basis. My uh, handbook, I do have an employee handbook, uh, contrary to belief, and. Um, you know, it says no drinking, but, you know, it's kind of a, in a bar, it's hard to tell people no drinking, no drinking, unless you're this huge, we're not corporate America, we're just a small little mom and pop place, and the customers insist on buying you a drink, and if you don't, they get offended, so it's just a real fine line, you know, and so as long as they don't sit there and and drink more than one, two drinks in an eight-hour shift, I don't have a problem with it. And so, you know, to answer your question, you know, it, I don't have a big shit show going on. Um, but uh, Melissa, she was she was crazy. She was out there. And, you know, there was a point that there was time she would bring in her own bartenders with her without my permission. And like, oh, this is a new girl. She's going to work with me today. And like, why? And there was times that Melissa would bring a dog and put a doggy gate behind the bar and I'm like, no, you cannot have that. That's against health regulations. Are you insane? No, no, no. And I'd have to argue with her. And the customers that loved her would say, oh, well, if you, you know, if you don't let her or keep that dog right now, we're leaving. I'm leaving. You know, and that, those are people that spend two, three hundred dollars that buy, you know, a lot of rounds after rounds in there. And you're like, well, what do you do? Do you let Melissa get away with it? And 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 do you upset the customer? Like, you know, sometimes I felt like. You know, I was stuck. I was stuck with Melissa. And as sure. much as I loved her, she's still complicated. She she made my life hell, even though I care for her. Did did you have, um, like, a lot of the people, like a lot of your uh, your old customers, did they stick with you through the chain and, and still there now? Or You know, they're still there, but there is a handful of customers who feel like she did, feel like Melissa should have been brought back. Melissa should have been given several chances. However, I will tell you, I gave Melissa several chances before that. Many, yeah. many chances. Her mother used to come to the job asking for her job back. You know, I suspended Melissa so many times. And um, 
it just it just had to be. It just you know, but the, yes, the, the, there's customers that still love her. She still has a fan club that beg me to bring her back and I'm like I cannot bring her back there maybe in the future in my other bar or maybe in a new business venture but I don't think it's the right decision to take her back to where we were you know I had a lot of employees threatening to quit if I brought her back you know it just was not a good move but, you know it wouldn't be a good business move for me at this time no 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 I, I agree I, you did again you did the right thing you, and you gotta look out for you I look out for number one yeah, I don't know if I'm number one, but um, I might not be a hero. I might be a zero in some people's eyes. But you know what? Every day I wake up, I give an effort, and I give it all I have. And whatever life brings me, it brings me. What it doesn't, it doesn't. And I'm just grateful for maintaining at this moment, at this time. Nice. So now, what is the name of the bar? Like, uh, is it? Madame Dahlia's Country Bar, or just Dahlia's Country Bar, or the name. I I still have Country Nights, which is my corporation, and I did okay. go to the DBA to Madame Dahlia's Country Bar. However, um, when I kept putting Madame Dahlia's, and I have shirts made, and the girls on Friday Saturday are work, you know, are wearing the Madame Dahlia's. Uh, however, a lot of people took it the wrong way because, for one, I already have beautiful, sexy girls working for me. And they took it as, um, uh, you know, that name, you know, are right. you running, you know, are you running a broth house? I mean, what are you doing? I mean, it just comes off the wrong way. So, you know, I didn't take the name away. I just kind of like on my Facebook, I put Dahlia's Country Bar, kind of took away the Madame's, but I didn't change it to, I did not change it officially to Dahlia's Country Bar. I kept the Madame okay. Dahlia's. I just, you know, I just kind of like on T, on the, you know, on <laughs> the actual Facebook, not the sign, not the shirts. I just kind of did away with it on the Facebook so I don't offend anybody. It was more, gotcha. you know, for the public, just for the public so they didn't get offended. Just didn't ease things up. And until they were comfortable and come in and see that, you know, we're not broad house, we're not, you know, we're not sleazy girls. And uh, I have actually very, very well-educated girls who work for me. I mean, I have a girl who has a degree in psychology. She's a bartender. I have another one. Um, gosh, I mean, the list goes on. I oh, just going to nursing school. I have another one who has a degree in marketing. I mean, I have uh, another one who has a degree in wellness, fitness. I don't even know. There's so uh, a lot of my bartenders are highly educated. They just happen to make very good money working for me, and that's what uh, keeps them with me. And, you know, they're kind of shocked when they come to work for me because they look at me like this little neighborhood, you know, dive, both bars, which they're not dives. If you look them up, Whiskey Girls and Country Nights, they're, Madame Dahlia's are, you know, they're good-looking places. However, um, you know, when they walk in, they think, wow, how am I going to make money in this little neighborhood bar? I'm coming to apply, and the place does not look slam. You know, and then all of a sudden they end up making two, three, four, five hundred dollars on a shift because these regulars really take care of my bartenders. Nice. That's awesome. Now, now a, a part of a show, which I, I was, <laughs> you, you got your balls broken over this. It was uh, when you came back from getting changed with the Slurpee. Did you make a Slurpee drink? I was thirsty. I was dying of thirsty. <laughs> of thirsty, of thirsty the Slurpee. What happened is we were doing the stress test, and we ran out of change. So I ran to the convenience store, and she didn't have change. So I jumped in a stranger's car. I'm like, please, you got to help me, help me, help me. And I'm screaming at the stranger. And she and she let me jump up in her pickup truck, and I jumped in, and and so she took me to the store. Wait here, I'll buy you drinks if you ever come back to my bar. So she's waiting. Well, they're trying to dispense, you know, the change for me. Well, they're dispensing it. You know, it takes a while because they don't carry that kind of money on them. So I'm dying of thirst. So I grabbed me a Slurpee while I was waiting on the change. So then I jump back in, you know, come back across the street, and um, I come back in, and he says he's a Slurpee in my hand. And so he yanks it out of my hand and tells me, 
and he's your manager. Why like, we're out of change? He's drinking his slurpee. I'm dying of thirst. I didn't care what he thought at that point. But he yanked it out of my hand and threw it into the ice bin. And all I could think about is, oh my god, how I wanted that slurpee. <laughs> <laughs> You have to make a, an official Dahlia Slurpee drink for the bar. <laughs> we actually have a signature drink called the Diablo, and it is so awesome. If you ever come to town, you'll have to try a Diablo. Everybody loves our Diablos. People drink them, I mean, um, all the time. It's a signature drink. But, yeah, I could probably come up with a Slurpee drink. But, honestly, I really did, ooh, I really did need that Slurpee. I was dying of thirst. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That is so awesome. So, I, Dahlia, this has been great talking to you. I'm, I'm so, I'm so, uh, again, so happy and proud of you, like everything that you went through. I commend you. I, I, I wouldn't have been able to take it. I mean, you're a tougher person than I am. I, I, I'd still probably be crying. <laughs> no. You know what? Uh, as I said before, you may love me. You may hate me, but one thing for sure, you will never forget me, you know, and that's the kind of person I am. I'm just tough, and I, I don't know why, you know, I was just, I just, that's who I am. I, you know, I'm, I'm getting all these nasty comments. I'm getting, you know, awesome feedback on Facebook and on, you know, on, I'm not on every social media. However, my girlfriend is, her name's Holly Jordan, by the way, she's awesome and she's a, she writes beautifully. And so she's keeping me up with all the social media. I'm saying, oh, my God, they said this about you. I'm like, really? Okay, that's okay. Who cares? And so I went back in, and the negative, you know, I respond. I'm like, okay, thank you for your comments. God bless you. And then, you know, the nice comments, I'm like, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate that. If you're ever in town, please message me first where I can, you know, make it a point to be there to say hi to you. So, you know, it's okay if people beat me up. I mean, you know what? That's okay if that's all, you know, if they're that bored in their life that, you know, that, you know, that's all they want to do is put somebody down. That's okay. I guess I must, I must have stuck to them somehow for them to remember me enough to even criticize me or say something nice about me again, whether they like me or they're not going to forget me. No, and especially now that uh, I mean, now we'll see it on reruns and stuff like that. I mean, it, you're you're going to be on TV history, so people are going to always remember you. Well, <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, in a few days they'll forget me. You know, just like anything else, it's like you know, it's like company after the three days. You know, the dead and the company after three days they both stink. You know. <laughs> Yeah, but just when just when you think it's over and they've forgotten you, then they're going to replay that episode. Yeah, and uh, and then a few days later they'll just say, hey, "Yeah, I watched that. That's this. That's that." Everybody has their, you know, it's okay. Again, I have no regrets. It was it was it was fun. It was an experience, and um, you know, I'll take what John Tepper had. It, you know, everything that that he taught me, you know, and him and I had some private conversations and, and I appreciate that. I mean, it wasn't lengthy, but it was enough to make me feel confident and uh, know that I wasn't, you know, doing everything terrible. And in fact, he kept a lot of my furniture. He kept a lot of my decor and um, they just said that a lot of my stuff was really great and they just couldn't see getting rid of it. So they just kind of, you know, did a slight, renovation, slight modification to my business. Now, are you still, like, you guys uh, keep in touch, <laughs> like, like, check in on you at all, or? You know, Mr. Tepper, I've not heard from him since he walked out the door. Um, not at all. Now, two of the casting directors, um, I messaged them to see if they watched the show, and they said, oh, my God, it was crazy, it was crazy. And that's all they said because they were the original ones who found me. And okay. they, all they said was, it was crazy, it was crazy. You know, they um, they didn't finalize it. They weren't the producers. So, no, I haven't been in touch uh, with Mr. Tepper. And um, if you know him, tell him I said thank you for everything and that I hope this helps my business. And if it doesn't, well, I guess, you know, I'll hide under a rock and 
Change my name and go underground. <laughs> so, so now that everything's pretty much all said and done with it, you, you taped the episode nine months ago. You've had to go through nine months of sitting and waiting for it to air. Now it's aired. Would you do it all over again? Yes. That's Hello. That says a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes, I would. I would. Yes, of course I would because I'm Dahlia. I mean, do you, do you not know me yet? Do you not know my name? <laughs> That's awesome. T A F F E R J O N. I need you. <laughs> oh, classic. Classic freaking episode. Thank you so much for making that episode happen. Well, thank you for your time, and um, I hope to chat with you another time. Absolutely. We're friends now on Facebook, so, you know. Awesome. Well, you can follow me and see that um, I live a big flowery, flowery life. Nice. So where where should we send everybody on social media and everything else to, to check out the bar? I you? Uh, I I, I hang out quite a bit at both locations, but, you know, um, my suggestion is to, to message me on on Messenger. Um, my Facebook is public, and, um, you know, I do answer all messages unless they want to see my boobs. <laughs> unless, you know, unless, so you, you truly know, are hiding them then. Taffer would be proud. Yeah, unless they just want to see a flash, I'm like, no, thank you. Um, I, you know, if they go, I'll show yours if you show mine. I'm like, no, thank you. And uh, so no, <laughs> I, you know, I do have my limits. I do have morals. And uh, my mother did watch it, by the way, and I'm in big trouble. Oh, oh, <laughs> what, what, what did mom say? My mother's 86 years old. She was horrified. She was so upset with John Taffer the way he spoke to me and belittled me. My mother's a very highly educated, very classy woman. My sisters are. I mean, nobody conducts themselves like that other than me. On an occasion, it's not an everyday thing for me to be, you know, to be an ass. And um, so, yeah, my mother was just so, you know, put out by it. She's 86 years old. I mean, uh, my poor mama, she just, like, could not believe it. I don't know if you speak Spanish or understand Spanish, but all she could say is, pero por qué, pero por qué, which is being, but why, but why, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So. Yeah. So, anyway, I... that's it. So, send everybody to uh, Madame Dahlia's. Um, but, honestly, I will, I will, um, what I'm trying to say is that I will reply to all friendly messages, anything negative, ugly, you know, I will not reply because um, I'm not mean to anybody and I don't want anybody to be mean to me. Exactly. You don't need that. You don't need that in your life. Nobody does. No. No. Well, Dahlia, again, thank you so much. Congrats on everything. Continued success. Lots of money your way, I hope. And I hope someday to make it to Texas to meet you and uh, have some drinks and some barbecue at that bar. Awesome. Drinks and drinks on me and uh, barbecue. Not literally on me. Not on my boobs. Not drinks on my <laughs> boobs. Not, no barbecue between my boobs. No barbecue shots yeah. happening. No barbecue between my boobs either. You know, <laughs> nothing like that. You will probably see me sitting in the corner and um, being aggressive. You know, I'm I'm kind of micromanaged. You know, that person needs a drink. This person needs that. You know, there was a comment before you leave, and this is the one thing somebody said on a talk radio that uh, somebody had visited and that I had given them a dirty look. I mean, that is so far from me. I embrace everybody i am the friendliest person you'll ever meet in your life i love people um that's the reason i'm in the business i mean my life would be empty without being in the bar business it's just because that's 
that's who I am. Now, don't get me wrong. When I come home, I don't even turn on the TV. I like silence. I like solitude. Um, it's I'm total opposite. But when I'm in my element, I am full force, and it's all about my customers. That's awesome. I have no doubt. So everybody needs to get to Madam Dahlia's. Yes, one twenty one thirty O'Connor, San Antonio, Texas, seven eight two three three. Or look me up on Facebook, and I will reply to anybody who would like to say something nice to me. I'm open for compliments at any time, whether it's my business or myself. Awesome, Dahlia. Thank you again so much, and I hope to make it to Texas one day. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Take care. And again, make that money. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right, there she goes. Dahlia Damore. I'm telling you. People got to check out that episode of Bar Rescue. If you're in the San Antonio, Texas area, go down there. Get some good barbecue, some great cocktails, cold beers. Enjoy some country music. Good stuff. Strong person, yeah, man. man. I give her credit. I do. I'm telling you. I was cringing. I was freaking cringing. Yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, it takes a lot to do that, but yeah, yeah. 